Hello everybody. This video is going to be an introduction on how to build a recommendation engine uh, to parse your CM data and feed out in uh, some uh, recommendations. So we'll be using production I.O. from Apache. As you can see, this is a high-level diagram. We have um, some uh, data sources here, in which case this will be the uh, open payments data. And that's going to pump into the event uh, server, and it's going to ingest it as uh, data points, and we're going to be building and training this engine here. And so uh, through a REST service, it's going to be providing uh, predicted results. So let's take a look at our data source here. So what we have here is uh, openpaymentsdata.cms.gov. Basically, the government has collected all the uh, egg spend data that's been reported by pharma companies and uh, provided as a single data source. The latest uh, reporting year is 2016. And this is going to be about the 500 meg download. It's got about 11.3 uh, million rows in it covering uh, 75 columns, so you can see the, the schema right here. Uh, also gives you a type of preview. So the catch of the data is that uh, the government doesn't report it event by event, so it's got no, I guess, recollection of uh, who attended each particular event. So I'm gonna somehow derive that data. So the strategy is gonna be that if the payment's on the same day and it's got the same amount, most likely uh, those HCPs went to the same event because typically what happens is that uh, for the cost of meals, it's split evenly between HCPs. So we can't take uh, the date as well as the dollar amount. Um, we can somehow deduce the uh, events that's uh, taking place. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, jump over to another tool I'm using, Jupyter Notebook, to parse open uh, payment data. So we begin with uh, the CSC files. I've already took a subset, I'm not using the 11 million rows. So I need to use read it in. And then once I read it in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, the date as well as the price, the cost, and create like some type of external ID, and then uh, create a unique set of it. So basically what this will do is it gives me a unique set of events um, for, for the uh, data. So event zero, event one, et cetera. So across, I guess your 23,000 rows is about, uh, 14,000 no, 14, unique events. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, for these events, I'm gonna reconstruct where I believe the event took place. Basically, when I merge these uh, data frames uh, based on the uh, temporal ID, I'm gonna go, go back uh, the first um, attendees city and state. So it's a little bit like an uh, Excel lookup where it pulls back the first um, occurrence of it. It's not gonna be entirely accurate, but it'll be close enough. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna anonymize all the IDs, but within the uh, open payment data, uh, it does reference back to another HTTP file. Um, so I, I wanna kind of anonymize it. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to export all this uh, to a bunch of CSC files. So in the traditional data, uh, data warehousing sense, I mean, the attendance is gonna be my facts file and then the dimensions for HCP, account data, as well as the dimension for the events. So the generate file is gonna look like this. It's a, a, a double, including uh, one column for the anonymous, anonymized efficient ID and another column for the event ID. And this one will feed into the events engine. So the format that I need actually is uh, a JSON format. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, to kind of take a look at this here. So within um, this directory that where I've dumped the CSC file, I have a little Python script. So let me do the, uh, Python script, what it does is it reads in the uh, to convert uh, CC file and then while well, splitting it and it prints out a bunch of lines that's in JSON format, okay? So what I'm gonna do is take a look at the events uh, data.json. So pretty much it's uh, what like what the recommendation engine requires. So you have the entity type, which is user, you have the target item, which is gonna be the event, not, not the recommendation event, but uh, the pharmaceutical, commercial, event and then the verb is by so i haven't actually changed this to let's say attended or uh, invited i'll do that in the future so i've not got around to uh figuring out how to actually uh, change the verbs yet within the engine okay so i have this one here and once i copy it so uh, I'm, i have a uh, prediction io installed within a uh, virtual box instance so this is um, from vagrant basically vagrant allows you to easily spin up um, and download these vmware images uh, virtual box images and then what i did is i installed production on top of it 
I'm using the recommender uh, called Prediction IO Template Recommender. It's a universal recommender. So I'm gonna do is uh, there's already an app ID for this. Uh, let me kind of uh, list out all the app IDs I have. So PIO app list. Okay, so here's my app. Uh, I've already trained it before, so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all the data from it. So uh, uh, PIO app data delete. My app's called Event Recommendation. So I'm gonna delete all this data. And I'm going to re-import it and rebuild it. So you have to type yes. So based on the file that I have, um, let me see. So I want to import. So I have the app ID equals six and supply the app name app ID. So easier for me to do the app ID. And then the file that I've had before, which is JSON format. Okay, so it's launching and importing about uh, 23,000 rows. So this is a virtual image or a virtual um, box. So it's a little bit uh, slower than I guess the physical hardware, but that's okay. It's not processing a huge data set. And the virtual environments gives me the benefit of um, being able to spin it up quickly and pretty much trash it. Um, so we have here, we finished importing the data. Now I'm going to uh, train the engine. I've already bought the engine before, no point in having everybody set to it. So PIO train. So now it's actually doing this part here. It's just building one of these, uh, training one of these engines. Okay, engine trains successfully. So what I'm gonna do next is I need to deploy the engine and it's gonna put itself up on the ports uh, 8000, which is the default port. So let's see how this works. So here's Postman to uh, unit test sending the rest requests in. So that's a, right now, because the engine hasn't been deployed yet, if I try to send a query into it, uh, I don't get any responses. So now let's go to PO deploy. It's starting up. Okay, it's attaching itself to ports 8000, so I send the request again. So basically it's telling me that's for uh, the HP uh, user 50. Um, these are the recommendations. The higher the score, the better the recommendation with more confidence. So for user 50, it's recommending this particular event. So let's take a look to see how accurate this data is. So within my Jupyter Notebook, I have a bunch of uh, verification um, lines here. So I'm going to do is let's take a look at uh, user 50 and see uh, where this pickle HCP is located. So user 50 right here. Let me just run this once more. So it's be control return. Shortcuts this person's located within I guess Louisiana city space land. And if you look at uh, this decision so he or she has participated in a bunch of other events here. So let's take a look at this particular recommendation, 3703, which is the event. 3703, so right here. And if I play this out, so this particular event is uh, located, I guess, somewhere within the uh, Made of the US as well, so Missouri. Um, a bunch of other out of towners went to this event as well. So, we're not entirely sure why we recommend this event, but uh, this one event doesn't look that local. So, what I'm going to do is let's say uh, look for user zero. And these are the recommendations. And then for user zero, he or she's located within. Tusa, Oklahoma, and then what I'm gonna do is take a look at the recommended event. 6965. Okay, so here's another event. 
where it's also pretty spread out. I need to go through the rest of the data to see how accurate these results are. And then within uh, the prediction engine, uh, because you actually have the underlying code, you can definitely kind of tweak it to see um, and if you want to give it more weighting or anything within the algorithm. Uh, so those, that's going to be my next step. But uh, pretty much that is what you need to do in order to deploy a recommendation engine. So in the future, if you want to kind of productionize this, you can definitely spin up a production IO instance uh, with the training engine and, and so forth. Uh, but instead of having it at the local host, you would uh, put it somewhere in the cloud. Uh, at that point, then pretty much uh, you can connect uh, to this web service through your app. So it could be the Salesforce, uh, go to the support, run a particular REST uh, API query for, with this particular uh, payload, and then you would get the recommendations back. Okay. Yeah, thank you for watching.